Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Welcome to The Advocate and welcome to a new year. Rest assured, we are here to ensure it's a productive year for us all as we continue advocating for a better society. I waste no time in challenging the foresight or even investment behind what we have termed Vision 2020. Seydou too is putting our preparedness to test and finding it wanting. He's shining the torch on the jam and the national identity number catastrophe. A case is provoking a matter that seems to have stirred up more than a few of us, the Supreme Court judgment concerning Imo state governorship. Chuka is said to hold our government officials accountable. This time, some would say he's said to address the matter of their job profile. Uche looks to start the new year on a positive note, should be celebrating some governors of note. In other words, deserving of the title, Your Excellency. Are there any? So just wait to see. So prepare for an edition in which we celebrate the good and critique the bad, no hold bar. After the break. A vision without a corresponding mission will end up as a mere delusion. Welcome to Vision 2020. Years ago, for ASEP, we set national goals and we named it Vision 2020 to be among the first 20 most developed nations on earth by the year 2020. The descending new den we were up to our usual jokes. Those were the words of my learned senior mentor, G.T. Ogunye. But how do we expect to attain such a height when there are no legal framework for dealing with negligence in our professional endeavors like medicine, law, building, engineering, and even government, apart from living for God? How can we achieve a vision for the Nigerian education when it is not good enough to educate the custodian of the same educational system who will rather send their kids abroad? How can one translate a vision of making a country a medical hub when the world-class hospital built by a former governor wasn't found good enough to treat the same former governor's minor bruises sustained in a motor accident? How can a nation whose pastors are among the richest in the world with a congregation of the poorest people on earth achieve greatness by mere vision without corresponding efforts and mission? We must be joking. Our manufacturing companies are being bought over by churches and would rather build a 13-kilometer church auditorium than build a 10-kilometer expressway or a 5-kilometer juice-making factory, despite the abundance of natural fruits. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Who do you want to achieve such a huge feat when the worst of us are the ones ruling over the affairs of the best of us? Which country can achieve greatness when its government officials will rather invest in properties in Dubai that set up businesses that will create employment opportunities for the teeming youth? Dubai had a similar vision 40 years ago. They created a mission to actualize same, and today they are one of the most visited countries on earth with 50 million visitors annually, including our politicians who go there to hold meetings, spending an average of $5,000 per visit. We mouth farming as if that's what there is to development, until we realize that farming without value added, like transportation, storage and processes is poverty. If we like, let us close our borders for 100 years. We'll wake up one day to realize that the world has moved on without us. We celebrate a governor for tarring road with four times the cost price as though he spent his money. Yet we expect the realization of a vision. A politician rigs election or a friend is given appointment and we troop out to churches and mosques to do thanksgiving. Yet we expect them not to steal. A custom officer at our airport, border control, gateway into the country, turns his duty post to a begging post. Oga, okay, wait till you bring come for us. Oga, okay, your boys are here. Without sanctions, yet we want the world to take us seriously. Here GT again. Since then, in aimless sightlessness, we continue to grow. It is clear we are not as serious as we often boast. 
when the vision was set two wasted decades ago, yet 2020 was a faraway landing post. Now the year is here, but we're in a deeper hole than the one in which we were many years ago. Hurry, let's set another vision based on divine hope. With no work, we'll still reach our destiny at Dorado. We need not plan or think to attain newly set goal. After all, our rich land still yield the inexhaustible black gold. My advocacy today is until government and every one of us in position of authority in Nigeria show selfless leadership by example, even if we set visions for eternity, without a corresponding mission, it will still end up a vision of delusional grandeur. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Actually, um, as you were, you know, giving your advocacy, what came to mind, several things came to mind. Uh, remember Dora's, Dora Kinui's, um rebranding Nigeria? And again, we knew at the time, what are you rebranding exactly? You know, are you just rebranding Nigeria to try and make it sound good? Meanwhile, there's nothing of substance really there to rebrand. Then I remembered um, Vision 2020 also included lighting up Nigeria. So everybody was supposed to have lights by Vision 2020. <laughs> are we any closer to that? Um, we're hearing that so much money has been spent on electricity and yet nothing's come through. Then the latest one was Nigeria Air. That for me is the great, the best um, analogy or the best example of our so-called setting goals. That you know, we basically put together a logo and cre created an airline out of nothing. Spent money and spent money out of nothing. So yes, you're absolutely right. If we carry on like this, we're just governing with our mouths. Uh, you know, there's nothing of substance on ground, and we're never going to get anywhere. We look at the schools, for instance. We want to be able to compete with developed nations, but look at our schools. We have people studying computer science without computers. Mm. How is that to happen? About so us. you're absolutely About right. <laughs> um, we're never going to reach that El Dorado, as you put it, unless we start to put in the work. I mean, the, the word that came up for me in your thing that struck me was the word seriousness, mm -hmm. you know, and it's almost as if we're still playing at, at being a nation. Um, why I sort of am sympathetic to Dora's vision is just that depending on who you ask and depending on what they're looking at, Nigeria is a great nation, a good nation with great people. Mm -hmm. it, the, the, what is lacking is that focus. And, and because we're in an every man for himself, you're not able to focus people on the greatness that mm -hmm. we can tap into. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at other countries and branding, they're focusing on the greatness and they're able to encourage people to you know, key into a common vision. But as it is now, every man for himself, because when you look at the man at the airport, you know, why is he happy to say, oh, God, what do you have for me? I, sometimes I look at that and I wonder, what will I give you that will be enough for you to be lowering yourself, touting? You know, what will I really give you at this airport that will make it worth your while well, to continue to demean yourself? No, but he, so there's something. There's a, there, no, but even then, it's still it's still very short sighted. Some of the things we target are very short sighted. But so isn't it because we have to survive for today? That's the mentality that you have to survive for today. That takes your eye off tomorrow and the goal, because vision is about setting a goal for the future. But as long as you're looking at today's bread. You're ready to give your birthright for today's bread. But Meaning that you don't have... So we need leadership. Yeah. That's the point. We need leadership that's able to look beyond today and show people sacrifice. Yes, show people that, absolutely. okay, you lay down today for tomorrow. So some of the things we see happening today, the way people are selling out on a daily basis, shows that we're not projecting. Mm -hmm. We're happy to give up today's... I mean, we'll cross into Seydou's uh, advocacy in a short while, but it just shows we're not long-term no. thinking. Yeah. We're absolutely. thinking of today. And once you're thinking of today, is every man for himself. Mm -hmm. And every man for himself will not produce a vision for tomorrow. Yeah. You know. well, you see, the I, thing, sorry, you see, yeah. the thing is, I think that um, it's, it's, when, whenever there's elections all over the world, people talk, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And so I think a lot of people talk so well, you vote for them, mm. and they never do anything. Case in point, actually, is Obama. Obama speaks more than what he can do. Yes, and that's where we have a problem in this country. Mm. We get up and we want to speak, then we win. But we really were empty heads in the first place. Mm. So nothing is going to come out of it. We delight in talking. Buhari has been going on for four and a half years now. We will do this. The country should be like this. He has never done, well, you know, he hasn't really done anything relatively. He has not done one, you know. let's use the right word. <laughs> so so, so right. basically, we need a situation where people do do I, things. I like, I like uh, you know, when you mentioned mission that once you don't have clear mission, then your yeah. vision is definitely going to be uh, misplaced. I believe uh, we have structural problem. Our constitution is faulty. We have leaders coming in, you know, with different vision. 
once the country, once we have clear well, have direction. In the first place. Yes, if we have a clear direction, we want to develop our country along uh, education, technology, then Tourism. successive government will come and follow through mm. on those plans. But here, each government comes with their own different agenda. And you know, it just goes clearly to show that we have um, that mission issue, you know, clearly, clearly defining where our, our direction is, you know. And this is encouraged by the Constitution, the Constitution is 40. Yeah. Once you get in there, the, the powers are so Vast. It's 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 no, enormous. Because I'm even thinking when you talk about you know everybody has their own vision. I, I know that there was a young man who said he came in to try and empower a local government, um, a certain area with a sports facility that would benefit. It was a selfless gesture, mm -hmm. but he was told almost point blank that how long will this take to deliver? Oh, it won't be delivered in my tenure. I'm not interested mm. because everybody's looking for themselves. Exactly. They're looking for Indeed. their own immediate and, and gain. And that's why for me, rounding up on this is, if we have a clear cut vision. And then we now say this is the mission to achieve mm -hmm. it, irrespective of the government. Yes, you it's just come absolutely. and look in. Mm -hmm. If you go back to time, you see uh, all our developmental plan. But every government comes and they begin to do their own. But well, so you see, it's about laying right foundation. Sedu speaks to the foundation of our plans and projects after the break. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Yeah. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a terrible, like <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. 